What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2008 Mercedes-Benz W211 E63 AMG. Today on the W211 behind me, we're going to be covering one of the more common leaks found on the M156 engine, and that is the oil filter housing gasket. Over time, the gasket gets brittle and hard and leaks, and the easiest way to tell is if you start seeing oil accumulate in your drip pan, if you still have it, or the splash shield, and or if you have a spot in your garage or driveway. In front of me, we have a kit that's available on fcpero.com, which includes a liter of oil to top off the system, a gallon of Rova coolant. This is going to be needed as we're going to be disconnecting the upper radiator hose, so we'll cover how to bleed the system. A new oil filter with the oil filter housing gasket for the cap and your gaskets for the housing itself with some O-rings included. So, before we get started on this job, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this DIY. For this job, we'll be using a small pick and a flathead screwdriver. I have a half-inch drive ratchet with a 32 millimeter socket for our oil filter housing cap. We have a 17, a 10, and an 8 millimeter socket, as well as a 2 inch extension to go with those. We have a T45 and a T30. We have a small set of pliers that we're going to use to release the petcock on the radiator, as well as some rivet pliers to release some rivets. We have a 3 8 drive ratchet, as well as a torque wrench. We have CTA 7075. This is an extractor syringe slash filler tool. We're going to be using this to get some of the extra oil out of our oil filter housing. Some nice to haves is an electric ratchet to speed up the removal and install of hardware. A small wire brush. I'm using a small brass brush that we're going to use for cleaning. Some shop towels. And then to catch our coolant, of course, a catch pan as well. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, to get started, we're underneath the W211. We're going to want to remove this forward front fl splash shield, which is held on by eight 8mm bolts. So with an 8mm socket on the electric ratchet, I'm going to go ahead and zap off the four underneath. We have two in either fender liner. And now with all of our hardware removed, we can go ahead and pull down the back end of the shield gently. Now with the shield out of the way, we can go ahead and access our petcock and work on draining the coolant out of the radiator. All right, my good people, we have a catch pan situated under our petcock, which is located right here inside of this cooler hose. Sometimes they'll have a factory marking like this one does in yellow, just kind of shows you that the petcock is lined up and locked in place. There's a small drain port underneath where most of the coolant's gonna be coming out of. Now I recommend you use a small hose if you can and attach it to that nipple so that you can kind of guide where the coolant's gonna exit. I have a random hose extension that came out of a CTA kit, CTA 7079. And it just has different hoses for the syringe tool that they sell. It just so happens to have a rubber end that fits nicely on the grommet. So, or on the nipple, I should say. So we're gonna go ahead and slip that on, just like that. We'll guide our hose into our catch pan. And then I'm gonna use some pliers just to break that locking tab free. You wanna twist it counterclockwise. And then as you undo it, it'll increase the volume of coolant that comes out of that nipple. All right, we're gonna let that do its thing. One thing to note, speed up the process a little bit. You wanna release the cap on the expansion tank just so that you can break the vacuum seal and let the coolant flow out a little bit easier. All right, at this point you can see our line is pretty much clear. It's drained out for the most part. We're gonna go ahead and resecure our petcock. Lock that back in. You can hear it click once it clicks in all the way. Remove the hose if you're using one, or your bucket or catch pan. Now that we're done draining our coolant, we're gonna go ahead and lower the car back on the ground with the shield off, and we're just gonna set a catch pan on the ground so that we can catch any more coolant that may drip down while we're working. Let's go ahead and get back up top. All right, to continue on this water pump DIY, we're gonna start by getting some things out of our way up here, starting with this beauty cover. Release it on either end of the air box by lifting up and pushing the tabs up that hold it into place. just to kind of get it started. Well, you can just pull this off, set it to the side. 
Next, we're going to work on removing the fan shot so we have more than enough room to work with. To start, we're going to peel up this weather stripping seal. Same thing, just rest it back. We don't have to take the whole thing off. With that, you have some rivets that you want to remove. There's a total of four traditionally, one on this seal, one on the other seal, and then usually you have two down here that hold some more weather stripping. These are obviously missing, so we'll just work on removing these two. Next, we have a total of seven 10 millimeter bolts to remove. We have three on either end, and then we have one in the center by the hood latch. We have two T30s to remove. And now we should be able to lift this up gently and pull it off and set it to the side. You want to make sure when you reinstall this later that both of these rubber grommets are secured and they lock back on top of your radiator. That's what kind of keeps everything in place from moving and dancing around. So we'll set this to the side and then we'll continue on the fan shroud removal. Next, we're going to go ahead and disconnect our electrical connector that leads down to our electric fan. Simply push on either tab and pull the connector back. You can tuck that behind the ducting over here. Just kind of leave it out of the way. Next, we have a metal U-clip, one on either end of the radiator and fan shroud that hold these two units together. You can use a small flathead screwdriver and just work them up, pry it off. This is what that clip looks like. Flat end on the radiator side, hooked end on the fan shroud side. Now we have our electrical harness undone and our two metal clips removed. All that we have left to do before we pull this up is release the two coolant lines that are clipped into the bottom of the shroud. So let's take a peek underneath and we'll work on freeing those up. All right, underneath the fan shroud, we have a coolant line to unclip from the shroud. So let's go ahead and do that. On the passenger side bank, it's in the lower right corner. And heading over to the driver's side. Still can, well, it popped out with the other one, but traditionally it is held in like that. This pops right out. And then we have one more clip that hugs the coolant line to the shroud. Just break this tab open, or free it open, I should say, using a flathead screwdriver. There we go. With those three connections freed up. Now we can head back up top and pull the shroud out. Ours is a little broken here, but this should be traditionally even all the way across. The goal is to kind of push away from the radiator while you pull up. The key here is to gently push the radiator hose over to the side so you can clear this nub right here. Once that one's freed up, the whole shroud will come up. In order to get to our oil filter housing a little bit easier, we're gonna to wanna to remove our power steering reservoir out of the way. To start, we're gonna disconnect this vacuum line that goes to these two EGR valves. Simply pull it away from it, each valve, as you lift them up off of the reservoir. It should come right out. Just like that. Pop the line off the securing grommet over here and just tuck it away to the side. Next, very carefully, you're going to want to disconnect this expansion tank line that goes to the thermostat and set it off to the side as well. Or you can fully remove it. Either one is fine. So we don't have to worry about it dangling around. I'm going to remove it from both the thermostat side as well as the expansion tank side. Just a small metal clip you pull up on. And then you can pull the hose out very carefully, of course. Release it from the grommet. And then we'll do the same thing on the expansion tank side. There we go. We can set that up here to the side, no problem. Next, we have a T30 that holds our reservoir in place. Now we have a vacuum line that runs behind the reservoir that goes to this EGR valve. Well, connects both of them together. You wanna to pull it up and free it up from the power steering reservoir. It's held in by a small little clip, metal clip, just like that. And disconnect it from that side. We can just go ahead and pull it through and just tuck it away. Now you're going to want to 
release the two lines that go to the reservoir from the same grommet that held in our expansion tank line and our vacuum line. They just pop out. And then we can lift the reservoir. Usually a rubber grommet that holds it in place down there. And we can tuck that over to the side. Now we have a better view of our oil filter housing and where we're gonna be working. Uh, from there, the next step is gonna to be to remove this solenoid. This has the same backing lines that go to the EGR valve. It's just held in with a rubber grommet. The key is just to move it out of the way so we have a little bit more working room. With our reservoir out of the way, we wanna release the solenoid and just move it out of the way as well. There's a small plastic tab behind it that you wanna to push towards the intake manifold lift up on it. There's an electrical connector down below that you can disconnect. Push on the little tab to release it. I'll give you some more play in it. I like to disconnect that vacuum line from that EGR valve and we'll just swing it up out of the way. With your electrical connector you want to make sure when you're reinstalling this housing that you kind of tuck it behind it and the EGR valve. If you forget, no big deal. You can just feed it through, but makes it a little bit easier to tuck it back in there before you put everything together. Okay, now with those items out of our way, the next step is gonna to be to remove our belt. One, it's in our way of our oil filter housing, and two, we don't wanna risk getting any coolant on it to contaminate the belt. So let's go ahead and grab our 17 on our ratchet and work on releasing the tension so we can remove our belt. 17 mil on our tensioner bolt. Once we work our belt off one pulley, then we can get rid of the socket and pull the belt off the rest of the way. It's always helpful to take a picture of the belt, go online, find an image if you're not sure how to reroute it when you reinstall it. All right, now with that gone, we can work on disconnecting our upper radiator hose from our thermostat. As I mentioned at the beginning, we have a catch pan laid down there. Even though we drain the coolant, there's always a chance there's something trapped in there. Flathead screwdriver. We'll pop this metal clip up. I like to slide it back off of the neck just so that it doesn't accidentally clip back on. And then we can work the hose off. All right, pull it off our grommet and then we can tuck our hose down and off to the side for now. Now we have a little bit better view of the oil filter housing. So next on our list is gonna be to remove the cap and the old filter, and we'll pick it up from there. Using a 32 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and get our cap off. We can let this drain for a moment, and then we'll just take off this whole assembly and set it to the side. We'll cover the filter replacement and the O-ring replacement during reassembly. With that, there's always gonna be a bit of oil left over in the housing. I recommend, if you can, to use some sort of syringe or extractor tool to get the last bit of oil out as best as you can. It's gonna make your life easier when we separate this from the block. Um, if you can't, you can use some shop towels and kind of just use those to absorb the oil. Otherwise, you can just deal with the bit of oil that drips down when we remove the housing. So I'm gonna grab a syringe tool to pull that oil out and then we'll go from there. All right, using our syringe tool, I'm gonna go ahead and extract some oil out. All right, as you can see, there wasn't a whole lot in there, but every little bit helps when it comes time to clean up and trying to keep our work area clean here. I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a wipe down. All right, that looks pretty good in there. Next, we're gonna wanna remove our belt tensioner assembly. I recommend you, redo, you undo the bottom T45 first because you have to untension, if you will, a device so you can get a tool in there. And then the top one is easily accessible without the tensioning. So I'll show you what I mean. 17 on our ratchet. We're gonna go ahead and release tension as if we were removing our belt. We'll take our T45, feed it in there, break it free and then zap it out. Now we can release our tensioner and we can get the top bolt off. Now with that out of our way, we can work on actually removing our oil filter housing. 
We have a couple more T45s to get at. We have one right underneath the filter housing neck. And then you have three more down below. Before I remove the housing, I'm just gonna remove this hose grommet piece off of our filter housing so it's not in our way. It's just pinched onto our housing with some plastic hooks. There's a total of five T45s that hold on our housing. So let's go ahead and remove those now. We'll go ahead and break them free with the ratchet and then we'll zap them off with the electric ratchet. Just note, the one that comes out that sits right below the EGR line is shorter than the top two bolts. And then now our final bolt, I'm gonna go ahead and lay a rag down here just to catch any more oil that may come out. Bottom bolt is just a hair shorter than the top two, but way longer than the one underneath the EGR valve. They'll be pretty hard to mix up. Right, and we have our fifth bolt, which is a little bit sneaky and hidden right underneath our drain. So just to recap on the hardware, two longest bolts, top two. You have your shortest bolt that sits under the EGR line. And then you have your next two intermediate bolts. One is your very bottom one, and one is the one that's hidden underneath your drain plug. Those two are the same size. With those removed, we can now pull this housing off of the block. And here is a better look at the back side of that housing. I'm gonna go ahead and set, that up, set this off to the side. I'll drain it out. We'll clean it up really nicely. And then we'll come back and we'll work on cleaning up everything on our block. Engine block all cleaned up. We have our housing all cleaned up. I scrubbed it up, cleaned out the inside. This you can unthread if you'd like and clean inside of there as well. We already threw out our old gasket. We have our new one in hand. Simply keys on one way, which is really great. It sits in there pretty nicely. It's got a couple tabs along the gasket that kind of lock it into place. So what I'm gonna do now is line it back up against the block and I'll get one of the longer T45 started by hand just to kind of snug it up into place. And then from there, we'll feed the rest in by hand and then we'll torque them down. Remember our shorty, that one goes underneath the EGR. Our other long one that goes right underneath the neck. And then our two intermediates, one is the very bottom one. And one sits underneath our drain plug. Now we'll take our T45 with the electric ratchet. We'll very gently snug them up. And then we're gonna torque all five of them down to 20 Newton meters. Okay, torque wrench set to 20. We'll go ahead and torque them down. You can probably already guess my good people, but I am going to paint mark these as we go. All right. With those situated, now we can go ahead and reinstall our tensioner assembly. So let's do that. You want to go ahead and get that bottom bolt started in by hand first. Just a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to get to get in your way. The goal is to get this one hand started. Once we get a decent amount of threads on it going into the block, then we can go ahead and install our top bolt snug that one up, then we'll detension the tensioner, snug the bottom one up and we can torque them up. All right, we got that one in almost all the way by hand. Now we can start the top bolt. Then we'll grab our 17 and detension the tensioner so we can reach the bottom T45. Snug that one up with the ratchet and then we'll grab our torque wrench and torque both of those down to 20 Newton meters as well. There we go. And here's our top one. All right. Now at this point, we can go ahead and reinstall our belt. What I like to do first is I like to kind of feed it as much as possible, and then I'll leave it off at the top roller here, the grooved one, so that once I apply uh, or detention the tensioner, then all I have to do is slip it over this end. So let's feed it on first. All right, feed it over the AC condenser straight up to the power steering pulley. All right, we got our belt situated. We have our 17. We're gonna detension the tensioner. And then just slip it on over the last pulley here. And boom, baby. Before you do anything else, just make sure it's fully seated on all your pulleys, especially the grooved ones. Once you're happy with that, we can continue with installing our upper radiator hose once more, as well 
has a plastic line holder here. If you took that off, again, it just pops into place. Now we can unbury our radiator hose. The kit does include a new O-ring for the radiator hose, so you want to make sure to replace that. Small pick, you can pull the old one off. And then you can take your new one, feed it on. You can lubricate it a bit with coolant. We're going to situate our clip back onto our thermostat housing first. And then we'll make sure that our alignment dowels on the hose are lined up with our thermostat and we'll just engage it in and click it in. There we go. That was nice and secure. A reminder that electrical connector didn't move so not too much to worry about with that one there which was kind of nice it stayed in place the whole time. At this point we can go ahead and reinstall our new oil filter with the oil filter cap as well as our new o-ring so let me bring that over and we'll seat that in that way we don't risk having anything fall in there. Right, we have our oil filter cap. We can simply pop off the old filter. Clip just clips into the lid itself. Don't forget to remove the old O-ring. Just using a pick tool to get it off. Go ahead and slip the new O-ring over it. You want to make sure that you put the O-ring in the channeled groove designed for it. You don't want it to be in the threads or up top, otherwise it won't seal properly. From there, you can clip your new oil filter in. And then using the oil supplied, you can go ahead and pre-fill the housing. We're gonna put maybe a third of the liter or so. I recommend you run the car for a few minutes, let it sit for a few minutes, and then check your oil level. If you need to add the other half, you can. And then simply reinstall over the top. Oh, don't forget, if you haven't already, to lubricate that O-ring. And then we're going to snug this down by hand and then you can torque it down to 25 newton meters which is pretty much hand tight on these units. We're just going to go ahead and give it a quick snug with the ratchet. Beautiful. With that back in its home, our next step is going to be to reattach this solenoid to the electrical connector and then back on its little tab there. And just clicks in. Just like that. Don't forget the vacuum line. Now from there we can work on reinstalling our reservoir. Note there is a rubber grommet right here that the reservoir keys into. You want to make sure that seats in there all the way. With that situated we can reinstall our T30. This one we're just going to snug up, but you can torque it down to anywhere between 7 to 10 newton meters. All right. You want to make sure your two lines that run to the reservoir are tucked back into this plastic grommet that holds them in place. From there, we can reattach our expansion tank line. Now, the kit also supplies you with two new O-rings for either end, so let's go ahead and swap those out really quick. Using a small pick. We'll just pry out the old one while I pinch it with the other hand. Just kind of get it started. There's one end, same thing on the other. You can go ahead and feed this back into our expansion tank side first. Click that metal tab to lock it down. Back into the grommet. And then back into our thermostat housing and locked in. From here we can go ahead and reattach our vacuum line that goes over our power steering reservoir. If 
feed it back into our elbow here. Clip it in. And then we can reattach our vacuum line that runs to both of our EGR solenoids. Clip that in, clip that back into the housing. And then with that situated, my good people, next on the list, we're gonna wanna go ahead and reinstall our fan shroud. So let's get ready for that. Just be mindful of that radiator hose on your right side bank. You wanna massage it a little bit to the side to get this fan shroud in if it gets in your way. All right, as you bring the fan shroud down, you wanna make sure you lock it into those two bottom tabs that we showed you earlier underneath the car. We'll point them out again when we get underneath to resecure the belly splash shield as well as the cooling hose that runs along the shroud. All right, my good people, back underneath the W211, we're gonna make sure our fan shroud is aligned in place. And then we're gonna reclip in that coolant line that runs through the shroud, so let's do that. So you can see our fan shroud is situated back in the radiator on the a clip that holds it into place, so that's great. And we'll go ahead and seat our coolant line back into the shroud while we're over here. Simply pop it back into place. So you can see our fan shroud situated on the driver's side bank as well. We have that coolant line up top that we need to reclip. We use a screwdriver to just swing that clip around so we can get that around the hose and clip it back into itself. So again, it sits above the connector for the fan. I'm just gonna reach up there for a moment and clip it closed, and then I'll show you what that looks like once again. Also gonna pop our line back here in place. So it's not fighting us up top. There we go. With that situated, now we can go ahead and reinstall this front shield. So again, kind of like the way we took it out, key it into the bumper first. Make sure it sits underneath this intermediate shield, and then we can put our eight millimeter hardware back on. I'm gonna start with the two rearward eight mils so I can hold both of these shields together and in place. We'll just hand start them for now, finger, finger tight. I'll zap these four in real quick with the eight mil on the electric ratchet. And then we have four more, two on either fender liner. All right, with this bottom shield situated, now we can head back up top and reinstall our radiator support. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, back up top, we're gonna work on securing our fan shroud to the radiator, and then our radiator support can go back in. Starting with either end of the fan shroud, we have two metal body clips that we removed earlier. Now would be the time to reinstall those. And again, the back side of the clip is gonna be facing the front of the vehicle, and then the curved end will be facing the engine. So. Pretty straightforward, they really only go in one way. There's one. There's two. While we have all the room to work with, we'll reconnect our electrical connector for the fan. There we go. When you reinstall the radiator support, you wanna make sure your hood latch release cable is running outside of the channeled areas on the radiator so that you don't accidentally pinch the cable. And underneath the support itself, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have these red isolating rubber boots or rubber blocks that kind of help keep that in place as well as help with vibration. So you want to make sure those two key back into your radiator as well. Beautiful. Now we're going to go ahead and hand start the seven 10 millimeter bolts and our two T30s. And our two T30s, then we're gonna go ahead and torque all of these down to 10 Newton meters. Not a whole lot. You could just tighten them by hand, but we have the torque wrench out still, so let's go ahead and torque them down properly. We'll swap over to our T30 bit. Now we can take our weather stripping from earlier and tuck this back over the top here, along with these pesky rivets. Then we can reinstall our weather stripping back in place. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our beauty cover. For the beauty cover, just like we removed it, you wanna make sure the six tabs are aligned, two on each air box, and then you have two up front here, one on the reservoir and one on the reservoir bracket.
All right, and now that we have our beauty cover back on, we have one more big step left to do here, and that is gonna be to refill our cooling system. Now, what's awesome about these engines is that they're not very temperamental, like the BMW vehicles are, or the Audis or Volkswagens. These are pretty easy. They're pretty much self-bleeding. So what we're gonna start by doing is filling up the reservoir as much as it'll take, obviously, without overfilling. Then we're gonna hop inside the car. We'll show you, we'll turn it on. We'll put our heat on high. And then we're just gonna run the car around 1500 to maybe 1800 RPM for a little bit. Kind of let the system self bleed and then we'll just top it off as it needs. So let's get to that. All right, my good people, we are ready to fill the cooling system. We have our funnel. We have our gallon of concentrated Rova coolant as well as a gallon of distilled water in there. We highly recommend you use distilled whenever possible. It'll just cut down on the mineral deposit buildup in your cooling system over time. Especially if you have hard water at home, you wanna to try to avoid using that. But with that being said, we have two gallons in here. We're gonna start filling the system very slowly. We don't wanna add any additional air pockets or create any air pockets as we're filling the system. So you don't wanna just dump coolant all the way in. A nice gentle pour. Once we have a decent level in our expansion tank, we're gonna hop inside the car, we're gonna turn it on, and like I said, anywhere between 15 to 18, even 2,000 RPM is good. And the goal is to get the car up to about 85 degrees Celsius on our gauge. That way we'll know the thermostat is open and the vehicle is circulating coolant all the way through along with having our heater valves open. So let's do that and go from there. All right, she took almost all two gallons, so which is roughly about what we drained out of it. We're gonna save that extra in our Rova jug, should we need to top it off. But for now, let's go ahead and leave this open. We're gonna hop inside the car, turn it on, get it up to temp, and go from there. All right, my good people, as you saw inside the vehicle, we got our temp up to 85 degrees Celsius, meaning we gave the thermostat a chance to open up and circulate the coolant. I also put the fan on high afterwards to make sure I was getting hot heat out of the vents, which we did. So at this point, all we have left to do is to put on our expansion tank cap. Check your oil level. Make sure you don't need to add any more after doing the oil filter housing gasket and then go for a test drive. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.